So that is something to understand. That's one of the first first parts to understand. Okay. In the Kabbalah, we are always dealing with reflective qualities. This is also why, a little segue here, while we get mirrored messages to remind us of these things. God creates thought, then creates mind to hold that thought. Everything has to do with the perception and activity of the divine spirit on itself, a process which various systems of symbols attempt to suggest. As was described in considering the wheel of fortune, the alchemist spoke of the divine self interaction in terms of sulfur, salt, and mercury. These same terms may also be applied to the super, oh, sorry, to the upper level cards of the tarot. The magician is mercury, the empress is salt, and the emperor is sulfur. Crowley has gone so far as to position his emperor so that the body forms a triangle and cross, symbol of the alchemical sulfur. So the triangle's on top pointing, pointing upwards and then the cross right below it. The magician, uh, philosophic Mercury, acts upon the high priestess, pure consciousness. And they are, by their union, transformed into the emperor and the empress. Sulfur and salt. Of course, all of this may seem a little more than an obscure abstraction, a bending of words almost for their own sake. But when we consider these principles as aspect of our own consciousness, they are quite basic. Agreed. When we close our eyes and follow, or sorry, allow free form images to float by us, taking whatever direction they will, we are tapping into the life energy ruled by the Empress. When we begin to think about what is happening before our eyes, classifying the images according to color, subject, and any other um, criterion, we are calling on the emperor into play. We are acting upon form. This is another of those cards where Paul Case brought exceptional insight to bear. As he explained why the emperor is on the path below the empress, he says, because she is the manifesting power which brings form into being, he has something to rule. The magician who appears now as the emperor would have nothing to control or transform. Did not subconsciousness send up from its depth a stream of images to be classified by the exercise of reason? So it's the process of creation, basically. <laughs> that is what we're discussing here. That's what it sounds like to me. It should be obvious that there is a certain crossover of the Yod and Hay energies. The Empress in the balance between Chokma and Bina. So basically destruction and creation. She is the growth which comes from the interse interaction of the male and female. As in the fertilized cell. <laughs> exactly creation. She is pure fruition. The emperor, on the other hand, while a potent masculine energy, is he on the path, meaning that its function is determined by Bina. This is a formative path. Its activities are rational and classifying, as underscored by its bright red color, that of Bina in the world of pure spirit, Adsalith. The lower we descend on the tree of life, the more the male and female energies are interwoven. And by this reasoning, one might assume that the only pure male and female in the universe are at the level of Chokma and Vena, which is unfortunately not the case. Having come to the level of the supernal path, it is necessary to introduce an idea which may be perceived as destructive to the entire tower of male and female principles so neatly established, established to this point. Let us state the problem abruptly. Chokma, wisdom, meaning the primary quality of maleness, is a female noun. And if we are willing to accept the assertions of uh, Gematria, 
yeah, Gematria, the idea that sages of the past have buried truths in the interaction of numbers applied to each letter or that each letter itself, a holy symbol, can we believe that the very gender of the title is insignificant here? Obviously not. However, the gender of the Hebrew noun for wisdom is not often mentioned by writers on the Kabbalah because it appears to be an irreconcilable problem of language. <laughs> but let us here take the point of view that whatever gives birth is exercising a primary female quality at the moment of birth. Adam is the first symbolic male, but insofar as his rib becomes or rib as his rib became the first female, he conceived and gave birth, thus performing a female function. The female was inherent in the male. What we are describing is not exactly androgyny or even bisexuality since it is a real transformation of the function of a given energy within all that is male there is female and within all that is female there is male so this is why we say mother father god because to say god is male only makes no sense at all at all at all he he god only of creation no in jungian jungian terms the male harbors the perfect female image in his unconsciousness as the female harbors the perfect male image in her unconsciousness These are images of the self as opposite gender, the concept, contrasexual component. This is what Jung called anim, anima, female, and males the animus. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. These are images of the self as opposed, opposite gender, the contrasexual component. This is what Jung called anima female in males and animus male in females these idealized qualities are personified as the magnum matter and the great the great mother who is binna and as the wise old man a personification of spiritual principle who is chokma on the past the empress is anima and the emperor is animus. In Latin, anima means soul, while animus means spirit. The very concept of soul represents the enclosure or definition of boundaries of spirit, the he creating boundaries around the spiritual yod. Thus, the perfectly developed male type on the paths is the emperor. And the perfectly developed female type is the empress. These are archety archetypal images which we meet in rising, uh, in rising on the plains, and with with which we actually converse on the paths. Whatever terms may be used to describe the emperor, he remains the bridge between the father Chokma and the son Tipperith. And the very fact that the son of Tipperith is exalted in the sign of this path, Aries, indicates that the emperor exercises some control of the solar energy of the higher self. Thus, the path of He is called the cons constituting the constituting intelligence, meaning that sorry, meaning that it assists in the building up of the light of Tipperith from the utter darkness of the supernal triangle as rational genetic structure directs the rising of the plant from the intense darkness of the earth.